Here we are at Leicester Square for the premiere of The Wrestler for the Talent.com boxing show. Let's see if we can get a word with Mickey Rourke, talk to him about his boxing career, maybe find out who he thinks will win, Pacquiao Hammer. Yeah, let's find out. Did he tell you about the hammer? <laughs> Listen, he told me about the hammer, so you got a secret punch, so like you're throwing out a secret punch. Razor Ruddy taught me something called the smash. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we yeah, we know about the, the smash. smash. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the left kind of uppercut, uppercut come left hook. Yeah, because I, I didn't like throwing this. Yeah? You can't always throw this, but the one that comes from here. Yeah? Yeah, well, I love that one. Also, you used to work with, you used to work with Mackie, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know yeah. Mackie real oh, well, man. You know what I mean? So, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Years ago, I used you to train with Thomas and Beckett, you know? Yeah. And, that's not there anymore. No, and then, no, that, um, you know, okay, I'm friends right. with Nigel because we, uh, I was training down at the Fish Street Gym and Vic, Vic brought, Andretti. Andretti brought yeah. Nigel yeah. down and yeah. I brought Nigel on the mitts and I go, I don't want to get hit with that right hand. Yeah, know? I remember when you came when you came on TV in, in 91. Yeah. Um, no, sorry, 90, 93. Chris Eubank, yeah. Nigel Ben, yeah. I used with James Tony. Right, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. How's James? James is James. I mean, let's put it this way, I sparred with James for two and a half, three years, and I got my ass kicked every day, five days a week. Never, I never won a round with James. Okay, I, got, I know there's enough people waiting for you, no, so I'm going to just okay. hurry up this. All right, um, your film, because yeah. you box, you had like, you had five or six pro fights? Twelve. Twelve pro yeah. fights? Yeah. All right, twelve pro fights. Yeah. How do you draw, draw the parallel between being a professional boxer it's, and a wrestler? It's totally, it's, it's a total different kind of fitness. I mean, with me, because I'm used to the boxing, I could fight and do it and be relaxed yeah. and move a certain way okay. that I felt comfortable with. Right. With the wrestling, the director kept yelling at me, you're moving like a fighter. Right. So instead of me moving a certain way and pivot, you know, all the stuff that I learned watching James yeah. and all the good ones, you know, I had to move more like just like a lunk, okay. you know. And so it was it was actually harder because of the training, the boxing training, yeah. to break the old habits. Right, and well. You know, because with the wrestling, you know, with the boxing, you throw the punch like this. With the wrestling, they go, they go like, you know, and it, for me, it yeah. felt very odd. Right. You know. All and, right, last, know. last question. Yeah. Hat and, Hat and Pacquiao, sorry. Hat and Pacquiao, who's the winner? No comment, because Freddie Roach is my old trainer, and I'm a, and I'm a Ricky Hatton fan. Okay. So I ain't going to predict that one, because uh, I really, really, really have so much respect for both guys. But I did know that Calzaghe would kick me. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks right. for your time, okay. Jim. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, okay. you got it. Okay, I'll tell you what's been. He would have talked all day, wouldn't he? Man, this, he could. Fighters know fighters. And it's just a universal thing. Fighters know fighters. And Kerry could tell anywhere we go in the world, we go meet a fighter and they're going to talk because he's saying, well, you know what? They're sick and tired. They go around and they speak to all these other journalists and it's all boring. It's the same old. Could do do nonsense, bloody blah, blah. Uh, and in this and in this film and this that film, I would advise anybody to go and see. It's a proper film. It's an abs. It's it's yeah. It's, you you, you come at it. It's, it's a it's a brilliant and film. And a great performance from him. Ah, oh, superb, superb, absolute superb performance by Mickey Rourke. But and do you know we came up with we came up with a perfect strap line for it. Now, Spence, what did you tell me as soon as you came out of the film? Oh, so I can't. Oh, well, we're not going to the after party. Nah, the other thing is that. Oh, sorry, sorry. That film should have been Rocky V. I'm telling you, it, Rocky F it should have been Rocky V. That's what Rocky V should have been. I think that were the exact words. Yeah, it's no, and it that's should have what, been. Stick that on the billboard, because that's what it is. But that I also man, think... a guy who was a big fighter in the 80s, oh, just still bumming around, you know, he's doing the independent wrestling scene, obviously. Rocky would have just been doing what? Yeah. But you, know, you name but, it, Tim yeah. Witherspoon, Bone Crusher Smith, Tony Tucker, all the guys. E e excellent film. Also, I think that film has, has got a lot with um, Mickey Walk's life. Yeah. Because you think about it, Mickey Walk was big things, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nine and a half weeks with Kim Basinger. You know what I mean? It was, it was proper big. It was proper, proper. Broke every black guy's heart <laughs> in, in Angel Heart. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure. Yeah, you see what Angel Heart? He's not young in this, man. What? talk about the prospects for this year ahead the big things for 2009 big things you've been hanging out with too many you've been hanging out with me too long big things it's an irish what are you talking about okay big things oh all oh, right oh, 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 please forgive me blood club yeah okay um like let's start we've got um we've got all the olympians haven't we most definitely looking forward to seeing them all james de billy joe saunders uh gavin frankie gavin frankie gavin can't can't wait to see them. They're all going to be fighting around six times this year. We're hoping to turn them. We don't know about that. 
Billy Joel Saunders. Yeah, I thought I said that. Yeah. Maybe I didn't. But yeah, that'll be it'll be interesting, wouldn't it? Six fights in at the end of the year. Well, we should know what they've got. Yeah, it'd be fun to it'd be, it'd be fun to gauge them. It'd be fun to gauge them because you know it's it's you got rare talents with these guys here and. Every fight is going to be different because you got you're going to be seeing the most probably three or four guys going on at the same time and seeing how they're going to be gauged, like who they're getting. Because you know it's going to be kind of fun. It's going to be kind of funny, like they're getting somebody ranked, I don't know, a thousand in the world, and somebody else is fighting somebody who's eight hundred in the world. So it's hard to it's going to be hard, but it's going to be fun to see how they're going to be brought along. Definitely, and we've also got uh, Tony Jeffries. He's fighting on Dennis Hobson. They. That'd be, good, that'd be good stuff seeing him. That guy's going to be a fantastic ticket seller. Um, you got to know from, from his stable of where he's coming from yeah. that how many people are going to be coming out to, to, to see him. And he'll get so a lot of Billy, Billy Hardy got in Sunday, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah he'll, 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 he'll get exactly he'll, he'll, he'll do that as well. Uh, then we've got, who's our other ones? Obviously, the one everyone says though from that Olympics, Darren Sutherland. We've seen him close hand in the gym. Um, Darren, fantastic time. Darren, Darren Sutherland is something special, man. Um, He's, he was born to be a pro fighter. And if you see Darren in the gym, and I, I, I saw him a few weeks ago in the gym, and Brian Lawrence was having a little talk, and I was, and I was saying that like, he is like somebody having 18 or 19 pro fights unbeaten and being brought along. He's not somebody who's just turned pro. It was like he was born to, to not to have a head guard and a, and a vest. Proper fighter, real serious guy. Uh, another guy talking about stuff. We were... The guys in the gym this week were so privileged to see some of the best sparring you'll ever see, weren't we? First of all, we saw Mike Perez, who's a Cuban heavyweight in, based in Ireland, former world junior champion, fantastic fighter. Him Southpaw. And, Southpaw. Him and Derek Chisora. Him and Derek Chisora were sparring. That was a great sparring session. And, um, but then that was put in the shade, wasn't it, by Louis Garcia. He's only had one professional fight. He's also based over there in Cork. But what a fight to spend. Yeah, you've got to think, Louis Garcia is 21 years old. Um, he's, a, he's a former world gold junior medalist, gold medalist. Um, he was spying with Carl Froch. We should have asked Carl about it, but we didn't. He was spying with Carl Froch. And Carl Froch said, that guy can fight. And Carl Froch is now WBC world super middleweight champion. This kid's only had one fight. And I saw him and I was saying, you know what? He's going to be one to watch for, but I'm also going to see people avoiding him like the plague, double plague. This guy here is special because... I mean, check him out, you know, check out this photo. He's just very special. Oh, Thank you. 